Hello there, no intro today, we are jumping right into the video. Because Notion just released webhooks and that's great news. So in this video, let's very quickly talk about what webhooks actually are, how you can set up a webhook in Notion and a few of my favorite use cases for the new webhooks. All right, let's go. First up, what actually is a webhook and why does it matter? Well, in order to explain that, let's actually take a step back. Now, let's assume we want to automate part of our process. We want to integrate Notion with other tools in our system. Maybe we, for example, have in Notion a list uh, of newsletter subscribers, right? Maybe we have a Notion form on our website, we collect subscribers, and we want to learn when a new subscriber has, you know, has been added to our Notion system. In the past, without webhooks, that meant that our automation tool has to come to Notion and ask for an update, right? Has anything changed? It's a bit like your coworker coming to you and every hour asking, you know, has anything changed? Are there any news? That, of course, is a very annoying and in the case of automation tools, it's quite expensive and inefficient because you need to, you know, query Notion over and over again. Webhooks, on the other end, is Notion being proactive about any updates. Notion being able to send webhooks means that if in Notion there's a change, right, so for example, a new user has been added to the CRM, it can automatically, proactively notify the automation tool. In our example, right, that means when anything changes for you, you just go to your coworker and you let them know rather than them asking you all the time. So to sum it up, a webhook is basically a notification that Notion sends from Notion to another tool, just like it can also notify you right directly in the UI. Setting up a webhook in Notion is really, really simple. Webhooks are available as of today as database automation actions. So wherever you have a database automation, you can now send a webhook. That means you can just click on the flash icon here, right, as one example, and you could say, for example, okay, whenever, you know, uh, send webhook uh, for new page, Whenever um, a new page is added, right, let's say we have a new entry in our CRM, we want to send a webhook. So under action, we have the send back webhook action. And you see now uh, we have the information here. We always have to define a URL with a webhook. When we send this to a web address, uh, we can add custom headers, key value pairs, and then we can uh, choose how much content we want to send from there. So you can, uh, you know, either just send the entry itself, then you get the idea of it, or you can choose any number of properties. Most properties are already supported, so you see we can send rollup information, we can set formula information, and so on. There are like a few edge cases with like several recursive levels where a value will be grayed out, but most of the values from the entry can be sent. Let's just see how this would look like in practice. This here is make.com, one of my automation tools of choice. And in make.com, we can listen for webhooks. If we create a new scenario, we can click on plus and we can search for webhook. And here we see we have the uh, uh, custom, uh, custom webhook option. So let's click on that. Uh, in make, you have to click on an add. You need to name this, right? So Notion test, let's call it like this. You could have set up some restrictions, but let's skip it for now. We click on save, and then we get this URL. And this is the URL that you want to paste here, Notion, uh, here. You could then add any key value pairs. We can actually, you know, like just like so test uh, and something, send that with it. And now we can choose which values to send, right? So we're going to, uh, let's send the name of the entry, and then let's send maybe um, the number. All right, perfect. So we said, right, that this uh, gets triggered whenever a new uh, entry uh, gets created. So let's actually make sure that we have uh, some values in there. So we can just, you know, like uh, have a test entry. We drag it in so that the name is filled, right? Otherwise, if we create a new entry, uh, it, got, you know, it has nothing in there. And we can hover over to here. And in a moment, we should see uh, a success and that it has received something. Amazing. Now, if you actually want to see what we received, in Make at least, we need to, you know, right click out of here, right click the mo module, say run this module only, and then just repeat this, right? Uh, so let's send uh, another element here. Let's have, you know, another uh, one exclamation mark. Again, uh, drag this um, into our system. Head over here. In a second, we should be able to receive it. Notion has a very low delay on this, right? So currently, like up to 10 seconds, but you see it's already here. And information that we get there, let me just zoom in a little bit, is uh, here we have the source. So this tells us this comes from an automation, the automation ID, and how many attempts, right? Notion will retry to send the webhook if it fails. And then we see also the data. And the most important thing about the data is the page that triggered it, right? Because this allows you now to do a bunch of other things. If you're building advanced automations, right, your next step might be to look up that entry if you need more information about it. But in most cases, you will be able to just send it as value. So you see here we have our properties. So we can see uh, what we have here. We have the name, right? So we can click in there and we see, okay, the name that has been sent is uh, another one. And we can click also in the number and see that this is currently empty, right? We didn't actually set a number. But basically, we have this information now, and now we could build on this and create a whole workflow around it. Alternatively, you can trigger Notion webhooks through buttons. So here I added a button to the page, uh, and as the action, we have also the send webhook action. 
Now, of course, if this is a page that is not in a database, we can't really send any properties, right? We could only set a custom header, but other than that, the only thing that we really are going to send is the actual page ID that as something has been sent, right? So if we can click on trigger me, check in uh, here in a second, right? We see that the data has come through and as a property, we get a page title, but nothing really else because nothing is there. But if you add this pay, uh, button to a page within a database, right? So if we were to go on the, the new entry here, let's actually just quickly copy this one and go to uh, our entry here. Let's paste this there, right? If we uh, were not to set it up here, we see that now we have the options also to send properties here. And the same is true if we add database buttons to this element, right? So if we add a database button here, same idea again, we can send any information from this page that triggered it to the webhook. Now for a few examples. By far, 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 my favorite use case for this is to send actually useful Slack notifications. If you've worked with Notion database automations before, you know that there is an integration with Slack, right? We, we can say, uh, we can Notion connect this to Slack and we can say, okay, if something happens, uh, send something to Slack. But the problem is we can't customize anything about it, right? If we, if we go to the actions and we say, uh, you know, send Slack notification to, we only can select the channel, right? That's it. We can't uh, choose anything about a message. And that means most of the time it's just like, it, it doesn't matter, right? Like it, it doesn't uh, send the information that we need. But now we can do this and it's super simple. So let's take a situation. We have a CRM, we have a client here. And whenever this is, you know, like set to in progress or like, let's say whenever it's set to complete, we want to notify our channel. We want to, you know, celebrate that we just made a sale. So how do we do that? Well, let's actually build this one in relay.app just so we see another app because, uh, you know, the workflows are always similar, but it's good to see different interfaces. Relay.app is another one of my favorite uh, automation tools. It's actually my favorite one, new one of 2024, and it's very, very simple to use. So here, same idea. We go add trigger. We search for webhook. And then uh, here we get immediately an address, right? Unlike a make where we need to first set up, here we have it immediately. We can copy this to uh, Notion. And now here, what we want to say is, okay, database automation. No, send a notification to Slack. And the trigger will be whenever the uh, status is set to complete, please um, send a webhook. Send the webhook to this URL and let's just include um, the name. Let's include the contract value, the person who's responsible and the type that we, we have here. All right, that's great. And then uh, let's test this, right? So we want to um, uh, click here uh, quickly on uh, done. And then in a second, uh, we want to see that we have uh, like actually some information coming in here. So uh, let's uh, just make sure that this works. So we set here quickly this to done, should send a webhook. And now we have in a second here some values to work with. Next, let's drag this response and then send it to uh, modify it and send it to Slack. So we say add step. And here we search for Slack. Uh, I have already my Slack connected. Uh, otherwise, you would need to do that. But I want to send a message. Uh, I want to send as a relay bot. That is perfect. I want to send it to a specific channel. Let's send it to uh, da, 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 the chatter channel. That sounds like a good one. And then here, I can now write my message. And in that message, I can reference data from previously, from that workflow uh, webhook call. Now, again, we, ha we haven't uh, grabbed the like a sample value there yet. So I will just quickly uh, do this. So we will go back up here uh, and we will say, OK, please uh, run this once. Uh, so we click on configure uh, automatically. It will listen now for incoming requests. So we actually need to quickly set this back to our starter tubes. I was to click here. And then in a moment, we can set it back to done. And now it should get the uh, response there and be able to process it. And there we have it. So now we have our uh, object in here with all the information that we can now use uh, reference in the next step. So let's click on save here quickly, then go back to the send message one. And now if I press add, we should be able to get from the webhook call, yes, uh, the whole payload. So under headers, right, if we had sent any headers with it, we would get it here. Otherwise, under payload, we can now go to data and we see here, uh, right, all the values that we send with under properties, the name, the type, the person, the status and the contract value. So we can now write our message in here and say, good news. Uh, we just closed a new client um, and then let's reference the client name. So let's say webhook call, the payload, the source, oops, source, uh, not data, <laughs> properties, and then name. And we want to have the actual title. So you see, like, we have to get nested quite deeply because it, like, actually just sends the object. But we can work our way through it. We want to send the text of that. Uh, we want to get the, um, the client and the title. Um, and then say, you know, uh, they just, uh, just signed for, and then we can reference in here as the next thing. The, um, again, right, source, uh, let's get to data, properties, let's get contract value, the number. Perfect. So now we uh, have this and we can uh, quickly say just uh, done. Like, well, let's uh, click on uh, done and let's head over to Slack and see whether it actually works. I actually just realized one thing. I had a wrong value in here. 
Uh, so in here for the for the name, we actually need to go to Webhook call, then payload, then data, then properties, name, and then uh, it's not the text here. The, it's actually in the first result plain text. So uh, sometimes it's a bit complicated in order to figure out where the actual values are. Uh, so you, you might have to to test a bit, right? Maybe also like uh, put it into into make or so to see how they actually come through the values uh, and then then figure out where it is. But that is the actual uh, entry point. Now we can click on done. Now let's click on publish and then let's test this. So let's go in here and say, let's say Apple just signed with us and they signed with us for 50,000 uh, euros. Really nice client. We said it to done and then we can head over to Slack. In a second, we should get here our customized Slack message with all the values that pull through. So yeah, yeah, good news. We just closed a new client, Apple, just signed for 5,000. Perfect. So now customize Slack notification, no longer like these default ones. We could also include links to here and we could do and all the formatting that we want, um, but we have full control over what actually gets sent thanks to Webhooks. Here's another slightly more advanced use case. One of the favorite things that I love building for clients is using the structured data that you have anyway in Notion and communicate it to others. So this is something that we are building uh, or we've built for uh, VC who wants to communicate to their limited partners uh, how many assets they have under management, what meetings happened uh, in the last week and uh, or last month, and which tasks they completed and which tasks the limited partner has to complete. All the information is already in Notion, right? So it would be really annoying if someone had to copy paste it into an email and send it out. So we do it automatically. But previously, the creation of these reports was a little bit um, less optimal, right, in terms of UI, because someone had to create a report in Notion in a database, and then they had to say, yes, it's ready to be scheduled, and then they had to wait, right? Because remember, we were in this knock on the door situation. So once a day, every day at 8 a.m., uh, like the automation would knock on the door of Notion and ask, are there any reports to be sent out? Which meant if you, you know, set it up at 8.30, you would have to wait up to 24 hours for the next automation one. But now, someone can just click a checkbox or change the status and it will immediately send out. That's a noticeable, really, really cool UI improvement for the advanced systems that we can build in Notion. Another one that I mentioned earlier already, let's say you use a Notion form on your website to collect newsletter subscribers. Now, whenever a new person or a new form submission happens, you can trigger Webhook and then add that person directly to your newsletter provider. So in my case, for example, it will be ConvertKit, right? So very simple two-step automation back and make, right? Webhook comes in and we go to add, convert, uh, add subscriber to the tool. The same could be, you know, if you wanted to send an email to them, right? You could do that. You can even do that inside Notion, even without a Webhook, if you don't want that. But whatever, right? Like wherever that information needs to go, just a two-simple uh, step automation and you're good to go. And one last quick use case that is super, super cool. If you have two databases and you need to keep them in sync in Notion, which is currently probably the best way to get actually granular database permissions in Notion, right? Because you can't share only a subset of the database. You have to set up one database and another and then a sync between it. And I have a long video that explains how to do it. But so far again, right, it is with a knock on the door method, which means you need to record the last time something has been synced. You need to check whether something has changed since the last time it has synced and then go through it. Few steps. Now you can simply say, okay, whenever a change happens in the database that you want to sync over, send a webhook and then immediately process that sync. Much faster and a lot more efficient. I will record a deep dive into how exactly to set up the sync between databases with the new webhooks hopefully soon. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about webhooks or if you have a really, really cool use case that you want to share with me, please let me know down below in the comments. And now uh, I have another video uh, over here, which lists out all the other 63 updates that Notion released this year. I really thought they might be done, but no, they hit us with another uh, banger with webhooks here in December. But again, like all the other 63 updates of this year here in one video, just click there and I'll see you in a few seconds.